Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope your day is going fantastic. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I am super excited. I get to share with you a reveal of the brand new June release that's going to be available on Friday over at the Newton's Nook Design Shop. Today's uh, reveal day one. All week long there's going to be reveals, so I encourage you guys to check out the blog um, for the reveal. Um, there are two new die sets that are the slimline variety. Super neat. Um, this is new to the shop and I think you're going to love them. I'm going to go ahead and separate each of these pieces and then I'm going to um, die cut them out and show you what they do. Um, this is the slimline frames and porthole die set. It's a five piece set. First you get the scalloped piece that will cut out a panel with a scalloped edge and stitched detail. Um, that actually measures three and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches. Then you get this porthole piece that has stitch detail along the edge. And then there's double stitch detail um, on the porthole windows. Um, how I like to create my card bases, guys, is I take a standard um, eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock, put it in my, um, my scoring tool here. I'll take my bone folder and um, I'm putting it in, um, uh, landscape wise and I score at three and a half inches. I um, enforce that score line and then I have that extra piece hanging over and that's what I like to use for my panels. Again I'm going to score at the three and a half inch mark and then I'll reinforce that score line and then I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer and we're going to trim off the excess. So at scoring at three and a half you're going to create a three and a half by eight and a half inch um, card base and that's what I like to create um, my slimline the size that I like to create with my slimline cards um, three and a half by eight and a half when you, or you could cut out a sheet that's seven by eight and a half and then fold it in half to create your card base but I have that extra panel and that's what I like to use again to create um, my extra pieces for my card so that's how I just create my card bases for the slimline dies okay I'm going to set one of my card bases and panels aside and we're going to die cut some of these out to show you what it does. Now again, this piece here will cut out a scalloped edge background panel that measures three and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So it's going to leave me a quarter inch around my card base. And then um, it also, since it is eight and a half inches long, it fits your die cutting plates beautifully. You don't have to have an extra large die cutter um, to cut out these plates, which makes it really nice. Now this inside piece, here's your scalloped edge. Let me show you. That's your background piece with stitch detail. And again, you at least a half, about a quarter inch around your card base. Perfect size. And then you have your porthole window. The portholes measure about one and three quarter inches. And again, there's double stitch detail on there set that aside. Okay, this piece has stitch detail along the windows and on the outside edge. So this is what it, it kind of reminds me of a stop light. That I would be a adorable card to create a um, stop stoplight. Wouldn't that be fun? Just like that, putting it on the card with different colors in the background. Um, I think that would be super fun. Um, this piece measures, the inside piece will fit perfectly in the scallop border, but it measures seven and a quarter inches and a little bit over two and three eighths of an inch wide. Um, and again, the circle is about one and three quarter inch size circles. Um, now when you layer both of these together, it will cut out a frame and then your stoplight piece. <laughs> So that's what it does when you layer them both together. And then this die set, again, this is the slimline frames and portholes die set, has three accent pieces. You get a butterfly, a leaf, and then you also get a flower. So that's a five piece set, which is super neat. That's coming soon. Um, on Friday, it's available over at the Newton's Nook Design Shop. Okay, we're gonna create a card later on with this. So we're gonna set this aside and then we are gonna do some die cutting with our second slimline die set. This is a four piece set and this is the slimline frames and windows die set. Now this size measures um, two and a three quarter inches wide by seven and three quarter inches tall. I'm gonna separate the inside pieces. The inside pieces give you um, some two and quarter inch squares. There's double stitch detail in these windows. So when you die cut it out, the squares have stitch lines also. So it's great for layering. 
after I die cut this out, you can see it kind of creates a, like a film reel um, style frame and it fits perfectly on your card base also. Leaves you a little bit more of a, a, a border around your card base, but it fits beautifully. These are your two and quarter inch squares. Great for layering or just adding those to your card base. And then you get these three detail pieces that fit perfectly inside the squares. You get a little banner, you get a scalloped square with stitch detail, and then you also get a fancy square is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> it's, it's super pretty for sentiments. So this is the Slimline Frames and Windows die set. Super excited about these cards because I don't make them very often and I think I really should. Now I trimmed down a piece that will fit behind this frame here and it, it, it measures approximately two and three quarter inches by seven and three quarter inches. I made it a little bit smaller just in case I aligned it crookedly. This to okay, and I also get the share. I'm super excited. This cute little stamp set. This is the um, farming fun stamp set. It's the four by six stamp set. Has some fun sentiments in here, guys. Um, thought you could use a little pickup. How cute is that? <laughs> and then there's one that says oh crop. Um, it's pasture birthday, like pasture, um, like a field pasture. I thought that was cute. <laughs> Digging up a happy hello. You're never too old to play in the dirt. And what's the scoop? So super fun, versatile sentiments. And then there is a coordinating die set with that new stamp set. So we're going to stamp two of the tractors here. I'm going for a John Deere kind of a theme. So I'm stamping with Memento ink and then I just colored them in off screen with my Copic markers. You can see how cute these little tractors are. What I had did to color in the tractors was looked online for John Deere tractors and it showed me pictures of the green tractors with the yellow wheels. And so that's what I used as inspiration to color in these little guys here. I used the coordinating dies and cut them out so they're ready to go. Okay, next up we are going to take our little frame. We're going to flip it over and add foam adhesive behind here. Um, and we're not going to do that just yet. <laughs> Cut ahead of myself. This is the background that's going to go behind my frame set. And I thought we would color that in using the cloud stencil from Newton's Nook Designs. And we're going to use some Distress Oxide inks. This is tumbled glass. And we're just doing some light shading, um, creating a cloudy sky background. It's going to be very soft and subtle, but I think it's going to look great against those tractors. Um, the cloudy sky stencil has two edges that you can twist and turn and you can flip upside down um, to create all kinds of different shapes and layers for your clouds. And I'm going to do this the entire length of my panel. So each window will have some clouds in it. And I think that looks great. So that's going to be my background. And I had a little color swatch on my blending tool and it keeps wanting to fall off. I, I, I'm meaning to laminate them, but I just haven't had the time. Okay, here is our frame. Here's where we're going to flip it over and add foam adhesive. We're going to grab our tractors and kind of play around with where we want them. Originally, I was going to put them in the, the bottom two windows and thought it'd be nicer to space them. And then as I looked at it, I thought they kind of look like they're floating in the sky. Kind of not very... <laughs> <laughs> not a very good scene, so I thought we would ground our tractors. To do that, I'm just taking some scratch paper and some vintage photo distress oxide ink. And I'm just going to use my blending tool and add a little bit of color to my scratch piece of white cardstock here, adding some darker areas and then some lighter areas. And then I'm going to even splotch it a little bit to make it look like dirt. And I think that's going to be fabulous. I'm going to cut this strip into two pieces. And then using my scissors, I'm just going to create some waves in it, kind of creating a little hilly pasture. It's actually not a pasture. Pastures, I think, are, would probably be a little bit more green. Um, I live out in the country, but boy, I'm not a farm girl, I tell you that. <laughs> we, have, we have chickens, and we had a horse and a goat, but I'm definitely not a farm girl because I don't know my terminology. But I ended up trimming down three pieces here. And we, I marked the bottom edge of the window frame on my background panel. And then I'm taking my dirt and I am just 
we're gonna trim this down a little bit more here but um, I'm placing my dirt just below my pencil mark that way the bottom of the frame will kind of cover up the edge and then any excess overhanging we just trim off and then we have dirt in each one of our windows okay now after we have this done we're going to use this banner for part of our sentiment and um, so that's what we're going to stamp our sentiment I love the oak crop I don't know I guess I don't um, I, yeah I love the oak crop <laughs> I think it's cute um, and I wanted to create a card, birthday card so I'm going to stamp it's past your birthday too so I was just I was trying to say that I, we don't use um, bad language in our house we I tell the, our girls that stupid's a bad word <laughs> so I think oh crop I was feeling a little a little naughty <laughs> stamping it but I thought it was just so cute anyway I'm gonna stamp the sentiment says it's past your birthday on some black cardstock added white embossing powder and I melted it and then blocked it off and then I'll take the oak crop and then stamp that on a, just above my banner with my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then um, it's going to be a two-part sentiment. So our sentiment is ready to go. <laughs> okay. After we have this done, we are going to build our little scene. But I kept looking at it and going, I need a pasture. I need some, I need some kind of vegetable in the background. So I'm bringing in this die set this is the flower trio die set from Newton Snook design and there's a leaf in here that has a kind of a long stem go through your dies guys try and find a, st a long stemmed leaf um, die and it work great for cornstalk so what I'm gonna do is use my vintage photo and then also just the ink that's left over on my um, I believe it's it's uh, maybe antique linen Oh, no, no, green. Maybe um, peeled paint. I just added a little two-color discoloration on my panel and then die cut out my leaves there. Okay, we're going to take off the release paper from our foam tape and go ahead and add our window right over our background. So that's ready to go. Kind of line them up. Okay. After we have this adhered, we're going to go ahead and mat this on some black cardstock. Since the, our sentiment um, has black in it, I thought we'd just make a little pop of color in the background. Kind of going to be a little bit of a masculine card. And so I think the, the, the black border is just going to make it stand out. We'll go ahead and adhere this panel to our card base that we created earlier. Just making sure it's centered. Lovely. Now I'm going to flip over each one of my leaves and then I'm going to add foam adhesive behind each leaf and then we're going to add a thought of glue on the bottom of the stem. And to create our little corn stalk we're going to do a little bit of layering. So we'll add, we're going to do one more leaf. Wasn't sure where to put it but we're going to do one more leaf, add a little bit of glue to the very bottom and then place this on the very bottom of our panel. Some are, some leaves are darker, some leaves are lighter, so I was kind of making a variant. And then we're gonna tuck the stem underneath the other leaf and stack them on top of each other. And it kind of looks like a little corn stalk, or a little soybean field. <laughs> okay, I went ahead and added my banner. This is oak crop and then at, popped up its past your birthday right in the center of that. And then I die cut out three little hearts and color them in with my same yellows that I use for my tractor and added those. And then some journey glaze over the hearts and the tractor wheels just for a little bit of shine. Journey glaze is like glossy accents, so it dries clear. For my next card, I'm gonna take three of the flowers that I die cut and then two of the leaves actually end up die cutting out one more leaf but I'm just color color them in with my yellow Copic markers three different shades um, to create some real pretty kind of daisies I guess daisies are white too these are just kind of 
yellow flowers that are real sunshiny. Very easy coloring. I think that looks great. And then we're gonna color in our leaf. Um, I'm gonna do all the flowers the same way and I'm also gonna color in all the leaves the same way. And starting with the lightest color, we'll fill in our leaf. I'll go in with my darkest shade, which I believe is a G17. And I'm just gonna go heavy on the left side and go around the stem. Go in with my mid-tone, kind of filling in, overlapping our dark shade, going around the edge there, and then blending it all together again with my lightest, which I believe is YG11. Don't quote me on that, guys. <laughs> Okay, actually, I have my colors right here. Yep, YG11. And I'm going to do that to all three leaves. And then we're going to build our background. I thought today would be fun. We have the the slimline frames and porthole die set. And the portholes, I thought it would be fun to create a shaker with it. So we're going to use the background. And then we're also going to use the porthole piece. We are going to add a glue behind the porthole piece and then using a real thin strip of acetate we're going to cover up um, these windows and every time I look at this guys I think that would make adorable stoplight card so if you guys invest in this little set you're going to want to make a stoplight card I promise <laughs> I'm going to add foam adhesive now for my shaker card if you wanted to double it up it would shake a little bit more but I kind of like it thin and so I just use one layer of foam adhesive for my shakers um, and then instead of using sequins I thought we would use some mica flakes the mica flakes that I'm using are from Ranger and so they're a clear like almost like a glass looking and um, so if it doesn't shake it still adds some real pretty texture in the background I created a background piece to match the same size panel as my porthole window piece there and then I die cut out another porthole piece I'm gonna line them up and then I add tape behind my die cut circles. Actually, I, didn't, I added glue. And then we're gonna inlay those circles on the panel using our porthole frame piece as a guide. Just the way they just line up beautifully. Now, you could skip the step, but I like the stitch detail on the outside of my portholes and also on the inside of the window frame. I think that just um, looks so nice. These are the Rangers, um, mica flakes that I'm using and I'm just going to grab my little scoop and fill up each one of these little windows pretty generously. Um, these mica flakes kind of make a little bit of noise when so when you shake it there's a little bit of sound to it and I think that's so nice. These are distressed mica flakes. Sorry guys. So if you're looking for them they're distressed mica flakes. We can see how clear they are but how pretty. I added that we're going to flip over our background now when you do this you want to make sure you get it lined up otherwise the circles that you adhered are going to be offset and it'll kind of look funny on the inside of the windows but you can see how thin it is um, not too bulky which is nice and you can see it doesn't shake very much but it does add um, movement and texture which is nice okay we're going to add adhesive behind our shaker then tack that down to our stitched scallop panel. Lovely. We're going to flip over this panel and add this to our card base that we made earlier. Again, our slimline card base that we created um, is a three and a half by eight and a half inch card base. And I got a little ink here on the side. I'm going to just clean it up with my sand eraser. I went ahead and added foam adhesive behind each one of my flowers. We're going to place them in the center of the circles. And they fit beautifully like they meant to go in there. And then I'll do the same thing with my leaves. Add foam adhesive behind there and just do a little tucking behind each one of my flowers. Next, I'm taking some black and white Baker's Twine. And we are going to tie a bow at the very top of our slimline card here. I think black and white goes great with yellow flowers. I'm leaving the tails of my bow a little bit long. Um, just because it's a slim light card, you can get away with that. Um, and then for my sentiment, I'm going to bring in a sentiment die from Simon Says Stamp. This one, it just says hello. It was the perfect size to fit in between um, two of my little portholes. I just popped it up with foam adhesive and used black cardstock to die cut that out. 
Okay, I'm gonna center my flowers with some black um, epoxy dots, and that will complete that card. I'm gonna trim one of my tails here. I like them um, uneven lengths. I just think it looks nicer. It kind of flows a little bit better. But these are both of the cards I made today with the brand new slimline dies over at the Newton's Nook Design Shop. Again, these will be available on Friday. And the stamp set, there is a chance to win it, guys. Details for that are over at the Newton's Nook Designs blog. I encourage you guys to check it out. I'll leave my blog and Newton's Nook Designs blog down below. Just click on that, it'll take you right to it. There's lots of inspiration using these products today. Day, all week long actually so thanks for joining me have a fabulous day we will see you again real soon bye, -bye.